A new $38 billion U.S. aid deal with Israel took effect last month. The largest single security assistance pledge in American history. It raises grant aid from the average $3 billion Israel received each year over the past decade to an annual $3.8 billion. That's $3.3 billion to finance frontline U.S. arms and another $500 million to develop and produce active defenses against the growing rocket and missile threat. Negotiated and finalized under Barack Obama, it's one of the few international agreements left unchallenged by President Donald Trump. And a new law supported by Republicans and Democrats in both houses of Congress ensures that Trump or any other president to occupy the White House through 2028 cannot scrap or even lower funding levels codified in the deal. I would ask President Trump and BB to sit down and renegotiate that deal. I want to give Israel more for missile defense, not less. But this gift, as generous as it is, comes with strings attached. It obliges Israel over time to wean itself off the significant amount of annual aid, 26.3 percent to be exact, that Israel's been allowed to convert into shekels for locally made radars, missiles and unique gear it needs to support U.S. funded American arms. That mechanism for converting some $815 million into shekels each year is called offshore procurement, OSP. And for decades, it's been a privilege granted only to Israel. It's this part of the deal that's been a red line for Washington, even before President Trump and his Buy America, Make America Great Again movement swept into the White House. But despite the deferred phase out, many here warn that loss of OSP shekels will have dire consequences for Israel's defense industrial base and its ability to remain self-sufficient in times of war. This is a threat to Israel's industrial locomotive that these small companies are responsible for. And of course, to the 10,000 employees, very talented people and their families who will lose their jobs. The Israeli Manufacturers Association projects layoffs of 9,000 to 22,000 workers, closure of some 130 factories, and a $3.5 billion drop in potential defense exports over a decade. SMEs, actually small and medium enterprises, have been a major part of our military production, and actually a major challenge is how to, uh, to maintain their existence. The group is lobbying at home for regulatory and funding relief for those at-risk firms many of them in economically hard-hit areas near Israel's northern and southern borders. It's pressing to preserve local production of Israeli tanks and troop carriers, compel Israel's top defense firms to subcontract with Israeli suppliers, secure government pledges to maintain shekel-based funding, and encourage U.S. firms doing business in Israel to spend more on local suppliers. And once the dust settles from the U.S. midterm elections, Israel hopes to take its economic impact case to Washington, not with an eye towards changing the deal, but to securing U.S. support for a spectrum of measures aimed at fortifying industrial ties. We are not trying to uh, reopen the agreement or to renego renegotiate an agreement. Our intention is actually to try to enhance cooperation between Israeli and uh, actually American companies uh, that will actually benefit the two sides. A rare success story to this otherwise cautionary tale is Tel Aviv-based RoboTeam. This all has been done uh, in the U.S. manufactured assembly and uh, right here we're doing the final testing before delivery. Less than a decade ago, Elad Levy and his partner were just two guys designing robots and optronics out of his grandmother's apartment, hoping to sell their advanced intuitive technology to the IDF and possibly even the Pentagon. Today, with IDF orders funded through USA dollars and many tens of millions of dollars in direct Pentagon orders, RoboTeam's Israeli headquarters here serves as a prototype design house for two U.S. production lines managed by its wholly owned U.S. subsidiary. One of our main customers is the IDF. We understood that if we want to comply with the FMF uh, regulations, we must from day one design the system that it will be able to, to be manufactured and assembled in the U.S. Barbara Opel Rome, Strictly Security, I-24 News.